Hello Pittsburgh, welcome to A-Plus Schools Education Update. I'm James Fogarty, Interim Executive Director at A-Plus Schools, and this month we're going to be taking a closer look at Pittsburgh Public Schools' budget and some suggestions we have to get to greater equity in how we fund schools in Pittsburgh. Join us. So school budgets can be a mysterious thing. We know that resources matter to student learning and that while more money alone will not increase student achievement, it sure does help. This month we're looking at uh, what we know about Pittsburgh Public Schools budget and also what we don't know and share our thoughts about ways the district could improve its process to ensure every student has he or she has what they need to reach a shared standard of success, including graduating from high school and going on to college or career. So let's give you a little reminder about who we are at A-plus schools. Our vision for Pittsburgh students is that overall achievement rises, that 100% of our students graduate, and 80% of our students complete post-secondary education or training, and that race is not a factor in achievement, graduation, or post-secondary education training rates. For us, equity is not an even split of resources, right? It's a strategic allocation. So what, do we, what are the strategies we look at? Well, we want great teachers in every classroom. We want resources based on student need. We want opportunities to boost student learning, like arts, music, and world languages. We want differentiated supports that can unlock the potential of individual students. Um, Pennsylvania was one of three states up until a month ago that had no formula to distribute education funding fairly and predictably. It has the widest funding gap between wealthy and poor districts of any state in the United States, and education costs are increasingly borne by local taxpayers, increasing inequities. So when we look at the state money, you know, we looked at a funding formula that counts students, provides extra weights for student needs like poverty, homelessness, or English language learners, and that you would have additional, uh, f that would consider the local community's ability to pay. How much, can, how much can taxes, how much in taxes can residents pay? Is the district charging enough? Does the community have special circumstances like being rural or charter schools and having declining or increasing enrollment? This way we can ensure that the state and local communities share the responsibility of paying for education according to what student needs are and what the community can afford. Rich districts would absorb more costs as they can and poor districts would get more help. This is what the basis of the fair funding formula that was just passed recently is. Well, when we look at locally at, at PPS's revenues, we see two major sources, right? There's the state of Pennsylvania, which is in the orange on this slide, and our local taxes, which are in the green. PPS last budget in 2015 projected using $27 million out of a $100 million savings account to fill a projected budget hole. However, the last three years, PPS made similar projections and came through the year with a surplus instead of needing to dip into its savings. At the end of 2015, that was also the case, and PPS ended with $129 million in its savings account. So last year, PP, in 2013-14, PPS spent 21, over $21,000. And what do we know about where that money comes from and how it is spent? Importantly, you know, our, is student need driving the way resources are allocated across the district? This is a big question for us. So what do we know? Pittsburgh is one of the highest spending uh, districts among, is the highest spending among the eight largest school districts in Pennsylvania on a per pupil basis. And uh, you can see some of the information on this slide. PPS also spends more in every budget category. So when people are asking me, what, what costs the most? Is it transportation? Is it the money that we spend on debt service? It's everything. It's debt service, instruction, support services. And we spend more on those items than uh, comparable districts. Now the good news is that the majority of funds, 76% um, two years ago, was spent directly on students. Now these funds are managed in two ways. There's costs and services that are allocated directly from Belfield and Central Office. And then there are budgets allocated to the schools, what we call site-based budgets. Now if you look, 44% of this budget is centrally managed. And that covers facilities, transportation, special education, nurses, and other costs that you can see on the slide. 32% goes directly to, to the site, through the site-based budget, right? And so that's money for instruction that counts towards principals and teachers and other items. But right now, because of the way that this, this works, we can't tell you how centrally managed funds are distributed across schools. What we can do is tell you how PPS is distributing those site-based or school-based budgets. 
And then we, took an, we did an analysis and looked at a number of variables to see what could be predicting what, how, schools are, how the budget investments are being made. Is it poverty? Is it school size? Is it configuration? And it turns out that there's not a statistically significant relationship between student need, poverty as, re as uh, measured by uh, economic disadvantage, and per student spending at schools. There's high variability in per student spending, you know, $7,000, $6,555 on the low end to $12,340 on the high end among site-based budget. Even among schools, with 75% or greater of students qualifying for free or reduced lunch. And that's the schools to the right of the red line. And looking at the relationship between per student spending, which includes staffing, discretionary money, Title I money, career and technical education allocations, and percentage of students who qualify for free or reduced price lunch, again, student, for this analysis, student poverty, we find, again, there's not a statistically significant relationship between spending and student income level with more dollar, dollars being allocated to schools with higher percentages of low-income students. So, and then if you look at spending by school size, it seems that the size of the school really is driving the budgeting, though there's variability there as well. With, for us, with a budget deficit looming kind of every year, PPS needs to know exactly how it's currently allocating its limited resources. And it needs to know, is the money being distributed in a fair manner that's linked, just as at the state level, to positive revolts for students, including higher achievement, more growth over time, and decreased racial uh, opportunity and achievement gaps. Like a fair funding at the state level, PPS should establish a fair funding formula at the district level that establishes a base cost of educating Pittsburgh students that includes all costs regardless of how they're managed, centrally or at the school level, and so that we could say, see it and know it, and then would allocate additional dollars to students with greater needs, such as those who are poor, homeless, English language learners, and those with special needs. These dollars should follow students to schools to ensure that funds are fairly distributed to meet those needs. I mean, furthermore, we think PPS should prioritize improving student outcomes over school type or size to ensure that its financial investments are making the biggest difference for Pittsburgh students. If more money is to be, bent at, be, more money is to be spent at some schools, it should be part of a deliberate strategy to increase access to higher performing schools and or improve student outcomes at others. Right? It's about getting the money to the students and making them the central part of this budget. So this may include increasing enrollment capacity at already stronger performing schools, getting more kids into our highest quality schools, investing additional resources at schools demonstrating progress towards better outcomes, and could include you know, reshifting or changing uh, the, the lower performing schools with low enrollment and high costs so that dollars can be distributed in ways that give students a better chance of success. We know at A-plus schools that resources are not everything but they are an important part of, of the equation. We hope you'll take a look at our website, www.aplusschools, um, and look under research and reports. We have our school-based budget, student-based budget report there. You can take a look at the analysis and read up um, and provide us feedback at info at aplusschools.org um, because we'd love to hear from you about what your thoughts are on how Pittsburgh Public Schools is budgeting its money. Thanks so much. We appreciate the opportunity to be able to speak with you on a monthly basis. And thanks to PCTV21, our funders, and those that help us make this project possible. If you're interested in watching this online, you can press below um, and hit like and leave a comment on our YouTube page. Thank you.